This is going to be called God's evidence against man. There is a lot of evidence against you showing that you're guilty. Romans 3.19 says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Everyone has been found guilty. The Bible says both Jew and Gentile are guilty. The Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says there is none righteous, no not one. It says our righteousness are filthy rags. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. In Matthew seven eleven, God calls man evil. God has our number. He has our address. He knows what is in man. According to John 2, 25, and we are all guilty before God. God has something that modern day detectives and investigators and the FBI don't have. He is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. And here are some ways that show your wickedness isn't hidden from God and some facts that will show you that you are guilty before God. Number one, God has your fingerprints. If you look in the Old Testament in the book of Job, in chapter 37 and verse 7, it says, He sealeth up the hand of every man that all men may know his work. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. If you look at your hand, and you see all the lines, and your fingerprints, all that is the work of God. God knew what he was doing when he made those lines and wrinkles on your hand, and your fingerprints. Man didn't start using fingerprints as evidence until the late 1800s, but God knew your fingerprints before you were ever born. God knows your fingerprints without it even being in a database. Your fingerprints were in God's mind before you were in the womb, according to Jeremiah 1.5, and God is the one who sealed up your hand, according to Job 37.7. The wrinkles on your hands and your fingers were prepared of God. He knows what you have touched. He knew you were going to touch it before you touched it. In Joshua 7 and 1, God saw Achan's fingerprints on the accursed thing. In Genesis 4, he saw Cain's fingerprints on the murder weapon that he used to kill Abel. And when God talked to Adam about the fruit on the tree, he said, Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. But God saw the fingerprints of Adam and Eve on the fruit. God saw the fingerprints of Samson on the dead carcass of the lion. God said in Isaiah 59, 3, Your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. God saw your fingerprints on every bottle of beer you drank, on every dirty magazine you ever looked at, on every keyboard you searched something filthy. He saw the fingerprints on every murder weapon that ever murdered anybody. A cold case is an unsolved criminal investigation which remains open pending the discovery of new evidence. But there are no cold cases with God. He has all the evidence. You can't hide your fingerprints from God using gloves. He sees through the gloves. You can't brush off the fingerprints, and even if you did, God has more than a photographic memory that remembers every detail of your fingerprint and where it was. God knows the fingerprints of the soldier that pierced the side of Jesus. He knows the hands that carved, This is Jesus, King of the Jews, in the cross. He knows the hands that plucked his beard. He saw the fingerprints on the whips that striked his back. And all the evidence points toward every sinner that isn't under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He sees the fingerprints of every person that touches a false idol. Isaiah 2.8 says, Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. 
your fingerprints is all over the iPhone screen. Every time you type in something filthy or you look at something filthy on Instagram and Snapchat, your fingerprints is on the iPhone screen and God sees those fingerprints. Every time your fingers were set on the fire of hell, like your tongue, when you typed out something wicked against your brother on Facebook, God sees those fingerprints. God not only sees the guilty fingerprints, He also sees the fingerprints of those who want to please God. God sees the fingerprints of those who are out to please Him in their everyday life. Proverbs 7, 2, and 3 says, Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Notice it says, Bind them upon thy fingers. And then in Psalms 149, 6, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. If you keep a Bible in your hand, then God sees your fingerprints on a King James Bible. He sees your fingerprints on an altar. He sees your fingerprints on the door of the church. He sees your fingerprints on the job. God said if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. You do the work of God by working with your hands. Paul talks about working with your own hands as we commanded you. God sees your fingerprints on the tools you use to work. Everything you touch for God will be remembered, and everything you touched for the devil will be remembered. Every pedophile pervert who touched the little kid that he kidnapped will be judged according to his works, and the fires of hell will burn his wretched soul if he doesn't get his sin under the blood. God sees the fingerprints on your hands when you're reaching up to get help from him. The woman who had an issue of blood 12 years when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, knew whose fingerprints were on his clothes and she was made perfectly whole. So Jesus sees the fingerprints of those who are reaching up to him to get help. God sees his own fingerprints on every child of God that was spiritually circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and it was the finger of God that casted the spirit of disobedience out of every born-again Christian. The fingerprints of God is on the soul of every person that came to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God has your fingerprints, but number two, God also has your DNA. God not only has your DNA, He made your DNA. And many times they can catch a killer by finding his hair at the scene of the crime. But what about God in your hair? In Matthew 10.30, it says, But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. God knows how many hairs you have on your head right now. God saw you sin, and he sees the hair you left behind at the scene of the crime. He sees the blood you shed. He sees the blood of the sinner on your hands that you refused to witness to. He said to Cain, back in Genesis 4, after Cain killed Abel, he said, Thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And every time these sick, filthy, serial rapists and killers murder these babies and kids out of their crib, The blood of the innocent cries from the ground. Every time a sick and twisted abortion doctor murders an unborn baby, the blood of that baby cries to God from the ground. God hears every silent cry. Revelation 21.8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. God will get vengeance on every wicked sinner that never believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the wretch plunges into hell that was prepared for the devil and his angels, there will be no excuse for that man. He had his options to choose Jesus Christ or reject Jesus Christ. And the 
hell that he's going to is the hell where God's anger is kindled. And it isn't just the hair and the blood that can link you to a crime. You can be linked to a crime by even your saliva. And every sinner had his part in killing the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did they do to the Lord Jesus Christ when they were killing him? In Mark fifteen nineteen, it says, And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him, bowing their knees, worshipped him. So they spit on him. The DNA of the soldiers who spit in the face of Jesus Christ was seen before God. And your spit condemns you if you're not under the blood. And all it takes is a few cells to obtain enough DNA information to condemn a person. The same way God saw the DNA of every sinner at the scene of his crime is the same way he sees the Savior's DNA when he took the sin of mankind on his back and died on the cross. The Bible said, He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Isaiah 50 and verse 6 says, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. And that's a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ sweated as great drops of blood and God saw the DNA in his sweat. They plucked out his beard. The father saw the hairs of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ shed his blood. And God knows where every drop of blood that Jesus Christ shed is located. And he also sees the blood on the soul of every saint that believed on Jesus Christ. Nobody is getting away with anything. Your DNA is left at the scene of every sin you ever committed. And it's left in the bedroom of every whore you ever fornicated with. It's left on every harlot you ever became one flesh with. You are condemned and you are guilty before God if you're not under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God has your fingerprints. God has your DNA. And number three, God also has footprint evidence. They say forensic footwear evidence at the scene of the crime can be as damning as fingerprints. And God knows where your feet have been. In Proverbs 6, God names feet that be swift and running to mischief as one of the things that he hates. In Romans 3.15, it says their feet are swift to shed blood. Proverbs talks about the strange woman. It says in Proverbs 5.5, 5, her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Proverbs 7.27, her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And God sees the footsteps of every adulterer that goes to the bedroom to defile himself with the whore. He can follow the footsteps from the man leaving his wife and his house and follow them all the way to the house of his whore. And the evidence is damning. And you need to get your sins washed in the blood. Or if you're saved, you need to get back in fellowship. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. And even the footsteps of Jonah were out in the open for God when he boarded the ship and he ran from God. God saw Judas's footprints in the sand when he betrayed the Savior for 30 pieces of silver. And if you choose the pleasures of sin for a season then you sold out the Savior for Satan. God sees your footsteps as you continue down the broad way that leadeth to destruction. Jesus said to the impotent man, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. God sees the footsteps of every sinner that comes to God and begins to walk for Jesus Christ and follow Him. Romans 10.15 says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. So God uses the footprints evidence to damn a person. And your footprints is also used to show that you had some good works in the flesh. God sees the footprints of the Savior as he walked up to Calvary to die on the cross. And he sees the footprints of every sinner that meets him at the cross. But he also sees the footprints of men like the rich young ruler who walked away sorrowful and in rejection. So God has the evidence. God has your fingerprints, your DNA.
God has the footprints. He sees it. And number four, God has 24-7 surveillance. The most damning thing for the sinner is the fact that the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good, according to Proverbs 15.3. And God sees you sin at the scene of the crime. And they have CCTV surveillance for evidence, which is closed circuit television surveillance. And when the investigators get the tape or CD from the scene of the crime, the evidence on those tapes can be damning. Sometimes the clothes or even the way a person walks can identify the killer. Maybe even the vehicle that they drive can link them to the guilty person. And sometimes the killer or thief will look right up at the camera and still continue their vile act of sin. This is what you do when you sin against God. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. So every time you sin, you sin against an almighty God that's looking at you. And the Bible says the pride of Israel testifieth to his face. When you walk away from God in pride and reject Jesus Christ, you spit in his face all over again. And when it comes to God, you are under 24-7 surveillance. He truly has an all-seeing eye, which Satan mocks with the symbol that's on the back of your dollar bill. Satan made the all-seeing eye an occult symbol, but God is the only one with an all-seeing eye. I don't know if God will play the sinner's life before him on a screen at the great white throne judgment. But the Bible says in Luke eight seventeen, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made known and come abroad. Daniel two twenty two, He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Jeremiah twenty three twenty four. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Ecclesiastes twelve fourteen. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Psalms 90 and verse 8. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. And all of these secret sins are recorded on tapes that have blurred lines and fuzzy spots. They are clearer than any Blu-ray, HD, DVD, and any smart TV. However, on the other, t other hand, every time a sinner turns to Jesus Christ and believes on Him as His payment for sin, this was also recorded in heaven. It can't be erased or taped over. The devil can't damage the evidence of what took place in your heart at the moment of salvation. And the devil might say to God that he has the evidence of your sin. He may say his footsteps went where they weren't supposed to go. His DNA was all over the scene of the crime. But we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. We have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ and God has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. The moment you got saved, got erased, every trace of evidence that you ever left, the blood was applied to your soul, and from that moment, you couldn't be convicted because there was lack of evidence. And in the sense of your eternal soul, you are as innocent as Jesus Christ. However, if you are still lost, if you haven't believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are guilty the evidence is against you, and you are on your way to hell. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. God is the judge of all the earth. If you meet him like you are in your sinful state, he will say, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. He will condemn you to an eternity in hell without possibility of being convicted by the Holy Ghost ever again. And you are currently on death row walking down the broad way of destruction. The Bible says, She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. You are a dead man walking. You are going to die and you're going to face God. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. The only way to get cleared of all your sin debt is to come to the one who died for every one of your sins. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Romans 5.8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ's mission was done out of love. It wasn't out of anger. Religion demands people to do good things to appease the wrath of their false god. Jesus Christ volunteered to appease his own wrath by dying in your place. And he is offering the free gift of salvation to anyone who will come to him with a believing heart. If you will believe on him, then this means you will put your trust in him and what he did on the cross to pay for your sins. 1 Corinthians fifteen three through 4 says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. Acts sixteen thirty one says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Romans ten thirteen says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So God has the evidence. He has your fingerprints, your DNA. He has your footprints. If you don't come to God as the guilty sinner you are and believe on Him, you are guilty and on your way to hell.